Hi everyone. In this video, I'll provide you with tips on how to safely transfer a patient from an ambulance to the appropriate destination. In this channel, I talk about all aspects of nursing. If you're interested in learning more about what it is like being a registered nurse, consider subscribing. I also would appreciate it if you would give the video a thumbs up if it has brought you any value. Lastly, be sure to check out the description box where I have links to free ebooks I have created and some interesting products for nurses or nursing students. With that being said, let's get on with today's video. All right, so you've been a critical care trained and you've advanced cardiac life support certification. Now it is your time to finally be the circulating nurse that goes around helping everyone. All of a sudden, in the middle of your shift, a patient with a heart attack comes in, specifically a STEMI. There, there are no angiograms available at your hospital, so the patient requires an escort to another hospital to get an angiogram to figure out if the occlusion in the coronary arteries requires open heart surgery or can be opened with a stent. Anyways, you're freaking out because you have no idea what to do and are afraid of what you might forget going there. Well, not anymore because here are some tips that will help you. The first thing that you want to do is establish two patent IVs. These IVs are crucial because you want to provide medications. Now you might be thinking why you want two in particular. Well, well you want to have two because you want to ensure you have IV access. Imagine if you only had one and you were trying to put in an IV when the patient is lying on a stretcher and the ambulance is moving and turning. Now imagine if the patient has veins that rolls like no other and the patient has active chest pain. You may as well go to straight IM for morphine. You aren't getting that IV. That is why two is so important so that if one goes interstitial, you'll have another one that will hopefully work. The second thing you need to do is quickly do a check on the crash cart. Imagine you were administering morphine, diamond hydrogenate, or you want to give sublingual nitroglycerin spray. Do you have what you need? Double check all the medications in the cart and go through the ACLS algorithm ensuring that you have the medications that you may need if the patient crashes, such as amiodarone, epinephrine, atropine, adenosine, etc. The third thing you need to make sure you have is standing orders. Sometimes in the heat of things, standing orders to administer medication and follow an algorithm gets missed. That puts you in a difficult position if the patient is deteriorating because then you do not have legal permission to give the medications that you brought. Make sh making sure that there is standing orders and that it has been signed by the emergency physician or typically the cardiologist is crucial in protecting your license. The last thing that I do when I take a patient over is take an antiemetic myself. Now, I have never been car sick in my life, but let me tell you, the first time I transferred a patient across town in an ambulance, I had the most amount of nausea ever. It was the worst experience of my life, and on top of this, you're sitting in an ambulance looking at a telemetry monitor, hoping to God that the only person that throws up is just you. Anyways, those are some tips I have for nurses who are transferring someone via ambulance. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any other tips for nurses transferring patients across town via ambulance. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.